Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk about another property of the binomial distribution, which is called the standard deviation. Of course, the standard deviation is good for any sort of distribution, especially normal distribution, but also is applicable to binomial distributions. So again, the standard deviation kind of shows you how widespread or tightly bound the data is. So the way we approximate the standard deviation using uh, for binomial distributions is the equation it's the square root of the variance, and the variance, of course, is the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. So when we have the two examples right here with eight trials, first of all, we're going to try it with the probability of success equal to 0.5, and then eight trials with the probability of success equals 0.3. And here you have the graph distributions of what those look like. So the sigma in the first case is going to be equal to the square root of, <clears throat> that would be eight trials times the probability of 0 0.5 and the probability of failure is 0 0.5, which is equal to the square root of two, which is equal to 1.4. <clears throat> the second one, sigma, is equal to the square root of uh, n would be eight, the probability of success would be 0 0.3 and the probability of failure would be 0 0.7. So what is that equal to? <clears throat> So 8 times 0.3 times 0.7, that's 1.68, so the square root of 1.68. And if we take the square root of that, we get 1 point, let's say, 1.3. .3. Okay, so those are the two, what we call, standard deviations. And again, what do we use standard deviations for? No matter what the distribution is, be it a binomial distribution, be it a normal distribution, the general uh, conception here or the general perspective of this is that the, this would be the, what we call the expected value in the middle. Then we have one sigma to the right plus one sigma, one sigma to the left, that would be minus one sigma. And you can say that approximately theory wise that about 68% of all values will fall between plus or minus one sigma. If you go out plus or minus two sigma, so we have plus two sigma on the left side and a minus, that would be minus two sigma on the right side. You can then say that approximately 95% of all values fall between plus or minus two sigma from the norm or from the expected value. And then we go plus three sigma to the right and minus three sigma to the left. You can then say that more than 99, about 99.7% of all the values fall between plus or minus three sigma. So when we look at the distribution, knowing in this case that the expected value is equal to four, and the standard de deviation is 1.4. 1. Uh, so it would be 4 plus 1.4 would be 5.4 for a single uh, sigma. That would be 6.8 for two sigma, and it would be 8.2 for three sigma. On this side, it would be um, 2.6 for minus one sigma. It would be 1.2 for uh, minus two sigma and zero for three sigma. So you can see that according to this, it falls pretty close to the theoretical thing that plus or minus three sigma incorporates just about all of the values, which in this case it incorporates 100% of the values. Plus or minus two sigma incorporates the vast majority of the values, 95%, and plus or minus one sigma uh, incorporates at least about two thirds of the values. So it looks like the, the way we calculate the standard deviation on the binomial distribution holds pretty close to the typical standard expectation of how it explains your distribution of your values. So trying that over here, of course, on the 1.3 would be 2.4 plus or minus 1.3 plus or minus 2.6 and plus or minus 3.9 for 1, 2, and 3 sigma. And you have kind of a similar situation where when you go out 3 sigma, you have pretty well close to 100% of your values incorporated in that range. And that's what we mean by standard deviation of a binomial distribution. And this is how we calculate it.